So about 24 hours ago, I was sitting there at work, only a couple hours left in the workday. Felt pretty good about myself and felt pretty good about the prospects of the game that is now tomorrow afternoon. We're going into Dallas to play the Cowboys and I felt really optimistic about things. This team had been looking like they were going to be healthier than they had been since last season. Um, everybody was playing. Everybody was ready to go. Everybody, you know, there were no nagging injuries that people were, that were looking to hinder players who were playing. It, it just looked clean. It just looked good. And I had every reason to believe that we were going to handle our business. And, well, now I have one more thing to worry about going into tomorrow. So, I felt real good about this game, and yesterday you get some bad news, Russell Okung, he's a coin flip. Russell Okung, starting left tackle, look, I've been hard on Russell Okung this season, I don't think he's played that well. You can go back and look at some of the games he's played this year, the Rams game, the Lions game, um, probably even like the Bengals and Panthers game, he was putting it out there on tape that he was not a good NFL left tackle anymore. But he's still our best offensive lineman. And, you know, that's kind of sad that I have to say that, but it's the case. It's the truth. He's the best that we got. <clears throat> and there were some minor rumblings on Thursday that he, you know, was limited in practice and he had gotten a little dinged up in practice, but it looked like nothing. But then on Friday... We got the indication that, you know, 50-50, he might play, he might not play. Um, my suspicion is that it's more likely that he doesn't play than he does play. And if he does play, how effective is he going to be? And, you know, if you guys know anything about football, you know, the first thing that ran through your mind was, oh my God, Alvin Bailey is going to have to block Greg Hardy. And if you guys saw my last 49ers video, you know how I feel about Alvin Bailey right now. It, it just, I don't get it, guys. If he was 20, 25 pounds lighter, he would be our starting left guard, and Britt would go to the bench, and I think this team would be a lot better. We might have two more wins, actually. I'm not promising anything, but we might be 4-3 and three or 5-2, and two, and things would look a lot better right now, but... Um, I, I, I just don't understand how a young player who has made very little money in the league right now would treat the possibility of becoming a starter this season with such disregard. Kills me. So, that's what we got. Alvin Bailey is now the blind side protector for Russell Wilson playing Greg Hardy, who, you know, has multiple reasons to be pretty pissed off right now. You know, he had the four-game suspension. He had all the um, drama this week about, you know, his sideline tirade and his um, comments after the game was over. But, you know, Greg Hardy has three sacks through um, two games. Greg Hardy is getting after the quarterback as well as just about any other player in the league. I mean, we've got Michael Bennett on, all, on our side. We know how good Michael Bennett has been doing getting to the quarterback so far this year. But, you know, on a per-snap basis, Greg Hardy is every bit as destructive. And here's the thing. For all the crap I talk about Okung, he played phenomenal football last week against the 49ers. Pro Football Focus had him said that after the 49ers game, that was the best game he had played in his career or at least in the top two or three. He was great. It was the rest of the line. The rest of the line had a lot of problems, but Russell Okung played a great game of football. And, you know, I'd like to believe that's him turning it around and he's going to play great the whole rest of the season. And maybe that's going to happen. But him coming up with an ankle injury doesn't fill me with a lot of optimism, especially when you know that, you know, he's an injury-prone player. He's always had a problem with this kind of stuff. So that's about five good minutes on the Russell Okung situation because that's, guys, that's the only thing in this game that has me freaking out because 
the way Alvin Bailey is playing football right now, he could give up eight sacks in a game, and I would just be like, yeah, that's Alvin Bailey for you. He's a fat ass who doesn't know how to stay in front of people. But we need him tomorrow. We need the running backs and tight ends to chip well on Greg Hardy on passing downs. We, we, we're going to need something because nothing else in this game really scares me. Um, and, you know, that's the other thing. The Cowboys, they're not going to feel bad for us because Russell Okung doesn't play or can't play effectively. I mean, Cowboys have their own problems. Um, Tony Ro They still don't have Tony Romo. If they do have Des Bryant, he's not going to be 100%. Um, you know, they've got injuries to Skandrick in the preseason. He's obviously not coming back. Um, Randy Gregory just came back from an injury. He's probably not 100%. I mean, you know, they've got their own problems. And trust me, the Seattle Seahawks right now have only two players injured who actually really matter on this team. One is Jeremy Lane, who's probably going to get back in two weeks. The other is Russell Okung, and obviously his impact on a game like this doesn't even need to be said. So that's a tough pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, to talk about this game as a whole, we should be able to run the ball. Last week we got back to running the ball, and we did so very effectively. Thomas Rawls is going to play. Marshawn Lynch is going to play. We've got our running backs. We've got our fullbacks, both of them, and they're both ready to go. Um, should be able to run the ball on Dallas, um, and their offense. The defense is totally healthy right now. A couple guys are playing injured, but the only guy we're missing is, um, Jeremy Lane. So there is no excuse for a team led by Matt Castle and starting Darren McFadden, who's been playing pretty good, but he's still Darren McFadden, to not go out there and take control of the game. And we're going to need them to. We might need the defense to set up scores or outright score a couple times in this game because I don't trust this offense to be able to have 12 play drives <clears throat> with Alvin Bailey out there. You know he's going to give up a sack. You know he's going to get called for a penalty tr to try to keep from giving up a sack. So, you know, we're going to need the other parts of this team to make it easier on the offense. Um, special teams, special teams. Um, the special teams has been a little off the last couple games. Big reason for that is uh, Derek Coleman. Derek Coleman is one of our best blockers on special teams as well. And when he got hurt, there was an immediate change in the way our kickoff returns were going. There was an immediate drop-off there, and now Derek Coleman's back. So, to me, that should change things. And we all saw what Dwayne Harris did last week to the uh, Cowboys special teams unit. So, Tyler Lockett, you're going to have to either score or set up an easy score, I think, in order for us to feel good about this game. And um, that's really all there is to say. At the end of the day, you're playing a team with Matt Castle and Darren McFadden starting in the backfield and that may or may not have their number one wide receiver playing effectively. Um, and defensively, I mean, excuse me, offensively, just run the ball a lot. I think Alvin Bailey could handle that. I don't think he can hold up in pass protection, but I think he could run block. He's a big guy, so, you know, he could be a road grader type for for the time being until he loses some weight. So if we execute on those regards, we'll be fine. I do not want to go into the bye week knowing that we just lost to, lost to Matt Castle. He is a above average to good backup quarterback, but he that doesn't make him good. I mean, you can say whatever you want about Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick is a better quarterback than Matt Castle. So there's no excuse. Only thing you can say, that Dallas offensive line, is obviously really good, and if we cannot get pressure on the quarterback, that obviously changes the whole game, so you got to attack the weak spots. Doug Free at right tackle, not having a great season. He's one of the weak points on the offensive line, so Cliff Averill, that's on you, and um, Lyle Collins, he's a rookie starting his second game. Another spot on the line you might be able to exploit, and we've got everybody on our defensive line back and ready to go, so... Somebody's going to have to make something happen. And I still feel good about this game, but um, there are some things to be concerned about. So, Alvin Bailey, 
It's on you. See you guys later.